welcome. Thanks for joining us live at the Reptile Park. My name is Liz and today I'm going to show you one of the projects that I'm most proud of at the park. The Reptile Park is a really vibrant organisation for the staff and our visitors. Not only are we an award-winning tourist attraction, we love to give a great experience to all of our visitors having a family day out, but we've also got some projects behind the scenes that we're really proud of, where we can give back to community. One of those is our native wildlife conservation charity, Aussie Ark, where we're working to save Australia's most threatened animals. The other is our life-saving venom program, where the program saves over 300 Australian lives every year. Now, part of that is if people are bitten in Australia and they go to hospital from any snake or funnel web spider bite, the anti-venom they receive all starts here at the Reptile Park. The funnel web spider program in particular started way back in 1981 the park director at the time, Robin pioneered the program. And since the program began, no one has died from a funnel web spider bite. So it's pretty cool. Now the funnel web spider program relies on you, the community, to give us the spiders so that we can extract the venom. So when spiders are found around the home or in gardens, people package them up, send them to one of our drop off points, and then they can be included in the program. Now funnel web spiders are found all along the east coast of Australia and there's over 40 species of funnel web spiders. But one of them is in particular really dangerous and that's the Sydney funnel web spider. It has one ingredient in its venom that makes it the most toxic, really dangerous. And of course, the Sydney funnel web spider lives in the same spot that most of our population does, from about Nowra on the south coast up to Newcastle. Now the Reptile Park is the only place in the world to milk funnel web spiders for their venom. And like I said, we rely on you to bring us the spiders. Now I'll show you just a little bit of difference between the spiders, the males and the females. The females are quite a robust spider, so I'm going to let her out so you can see her nice and easily. You can see that she's a really big, strong spider. She's got thick legs, a really big abdomen. She looks pretty tough. Now really, the females are actually quite secretive. They can live for up to 20 years, but they tend to stay pretty close to their burrow. They wait for food and for the males to come to them. Now the food are signaled by the tripwires that the, the females leave out in their webbing, and the males can seek them out using the pheromones that the female sends out, or the smell. Now in comparison to that, the male spider, and I've got a male here today to show you that was actually brought into the reptile park just yesterday. So you can see that the male, even though he's the same size, he actually looks quite delicate and fragile. He's got those longer, thinner legs. Um, his abdomen is a lot smaller. And you can see, you can identify the male in a, in a few different ways. He's got these big palps right at the front here. And he's also got a spur on his second leg back. And that helps when he's mating with the female, but it also just helps us identify that Sydney male spider really, really easily. Now, one of the challenges with the program is that the males only live for about 12 months once they've matured, and only the males can be used for the milking program. So it's a, there's a really high turnover in the, the amount of males that we have, and we're constantly looking for more. Now, funnel web spiders usually are on the move in the summer months. So from about November through till May each year, the spiders are out looking for each other, in particular the males. They're looking for the females to mate with. And they use those warm, humid nights of summer to go out and look under the cover of darkness. And when the sun comes up, they want to hide. They hate being out in the open and that they can actually dry out really easily in the sun. So they'll jump under the nearest log, rock, or a shoe that might be there, they'll scamper into, or a pile of washing or jumper that we leave on the ground. That's usually where bites occur. So I'm going to show you how to safely catch a funnel web spider. And even though they're the most dangerous species of spider, they're actually really easy to catch. Now the female that we let out before, she's just sitting there at the moment. And you can catch funnel webs using some really simple household tools. Um, in particular, a, a nice hard plastic or glass container. I like to use something quite tall with a, a nice wide um, opening at the top so that your hand can stay nice and far away. And also something nice and long like a, a salad spoon or something similar. So if they're just sitting there or they're walking along, you can simply put the container in front of them and use your tool to just help encourage them into the container. Now, if they're wanting to stand up defensively, so I'll 
tip her back out. Now, if she wants to stand, go back out here, sweetheart. There you go. So if she wants to stand defensively, we'll just pop the container over the top and use uh, a laminated piece of plastic or a piece of cardboard to just slip underneath the container. Encourage her onto it and just tip the container over. Now spiders can't jump. A lot of people think that they can. They can't jump. But they have tiny little hooks on the end of their legs. So if they get a hook up to the top rim of the container, they can really easily lift themselves over it. So that's why the tall container really helps to secure that spider. Now, like I said, hard plastic or glass, you don't want to use something flimsy. You just secure the spider with a lid. Now, it also helps before you send the spider to us to always include a wet cotton bud or a little bit of moist dirt, just so that the spider stays safe and healthy on its trip to the reptile park. Now, the program here, like I said, relies on donation spiders, but there are quiet months. The spiders become quite dormant in winter, so we don't get as many handings over that time. Now, the milking program here is critical, and those spiders we get from you are irreplaceable. But we've also come up with a project, a new project, to support the program during those quieter months. About two and a half years ago, we started breeding funnel-web spiders and also collecting egg sacs to hatch here in captivity. Now today I've got um, a couple of females to show you. We don't have egg sacs because it's the wrong time of year. But the females at the moment do have eggs inside their abdomen. So I'll show you this girl. You can see that she's quite a big girl. And on the side of her abdomen, that's it honey, you can see that there's a white patch just down the side of her abdomen. Hopefully you can see that. Now she's full of potential eggs and she won't lay them. She won't build her egg sac until September, August, September this year. And she'll protect that egg sac with all of her force. Now, the females are quite maternal, so they'll look after the egg sac and they actually care for it quite a bit in those early stages. They turn it and they roll it and they make sure that the egg sacs move so that the egg development starts off in the right way. They're also really sensitive to any changes around them, whether that's environmental or any disturbances. So when we have females or egg sacs here, we actually keep them under a dark plant pot so that they're not disturbed and they can feel safe and secure while they're growing their babies. Now part of the, the challenge for us here in this project is to hatch and grow as many funnel web spiders as we can and also to get them to mature into males as quick as we can so that they can be included in the program. You can see behind me we've got about 2,000 funnel web spiders at the moment in the project and that's from three seasons of breeding. The majority of those are from this year alone with about 1,200 babies. So it's been a really successful season. Now once those egg sacs hatch, the babies stay around the mum for a certain period of time before they disperse and find their own area. Now in captivity, we can watch these spiders grow and encourage them to grow by looking at their molts. So a, a spider has a hard exoskeleton, a hard shell around their body. So as they grow, they need to burst out or molt that shed and grow a new one. Now you can see I've just gotten a si one, one of each size molt out to show you today. So a male funnel web spider molts six times once it's out of the egg, uh, um, the egg sac before it matures into a male. And you can see how each time it molts, that molt gets a little bit larger. When the spiders mature, he doesn't molt anymore in his entire life. Now, putting into context, he's only got about 12 months from that last molt to live. So he doesn't eat a lot and his main mission in life is to find a girlfriend. Now, while the spiders are here in captivity with us, like I said, we've got about 2,000 here to look after. And it's our job to make sure that they're well cared for, happy, healthy, and in optimum condition. So our spiders are fed between once a week and once a fortnight. They're fed really well looked after crickets and they love their little singular jars. Believe it or not, spiders don't like to share space, especially funnel webs. So they get their own jar to themselves, just like a natural burrow, and they are quite happy in their deep amount of soil. Now this little fella here, I'm going to point him out. You can see he's in a burrow, but he's 
quite uh, nicely on the side of the burrow so we can see him today. He's one of this year's babies. So he hatched only five months ago and he's already about 10 to 15 millimetres. Now when he was born, he was only about half the size of a grain of rice. So really, really small. So he's growing quite a bit. Now, like I said, they love to be in these little containers in their nice little burrows. We give them their food, we watch their water content, and we check on the spiders every week to make sure that they're nice and happy. As they grow, we can monitor them using these molts. And it's interesting, even when they're down in the burrow, when they molt, they actually bring the molt to the top and get rid of us. So, so they're sort of signalling us that the molts there are ready to be taken away. They like their burrows to stay nice and clean. Now, when the spiders do mature into males, they move over into the venom program. And that's where the males are milked for their venom. Now the males can be milked about once a week or once a fortnight. Uh, we like to milk them once a week to maximize the amount of venom that we get out of the spider and also allow, allowing them plenty of time to rest. So I'm gonna show you some of the milking process that we have here at the park today. So if we just move over, come over this way and we'll have a look at our new boy that we brought in. So we can milk the spiders in any containers. Like I said, this program was pioneered in 1981 and it's quite simple. It uses a, a glass pipette. So you can see the pipette here. It's just a really thin tube. It's glass and it's coated with silicon so the venom doesn't stick to it. And it's got a hose that goes under the table to a nice little pump that creates a bit of suction through the hose. So that way we can remove the venom when it's produced on the fangs of the spider. Now the challenge with a uh, spider web spider milking is that males in particular are really jumpy spiders. They're really nervous in nature. So when you're milking them, you really want to get the venom off the fang before they bite down on the dirt or bite down on the, the substrate around them or waste it. So it's a fine balance of, of asking the spider to stand up in their defensive pose like he's doing just now and getting the venom off his fangs. And they're really sensitive animals. So you can see this male here, the funnel webs have all these tiny little hairs all over their body and they can sense the vibrations the movement all around them so I can use the tongs that I've got in my hand or I can use just my breath on the spider to get that response of him standing up now some are more jumpy than others and we even give our spiders names to remind us of which ones have more attitude than others and which ones produce more venom so you can see he's a pretty willing participant he's actually got some venom on the end of his fang now you might not be able to see it because it's quite a small amount. But you can see that all he's doing is standing in that defensive pose and striking downwards. And today I can get quite a bit of venom out of him. You can also see from sitting there that nice big spur that's on the um, second leg back. So if you see where my pipette is pointing now, there's that male spur. So different um, subspecies of funnel webs, the spur can look a little bit different and it can also be just a, a bit of a tuft of hair instead of an actual spur. But with the Sydney male funnel web, it's quite a noticeable spur. So it's very easy to identify. Now the first aid for funnel web spider bites is really, really easy, even though it's a, a very dangerous bite and the, the bites have been known to cause death within 15 minutes of the bite. So they're really dangerous. Um, the first aid's actually quite simple. It's just using a pressure and a mobilization bandage and getting yourself to hospital. Now we're lucky in Australia, we have a great medical system and the anti-venom once you get there is administered at no extra cost. So if you can do the first aid, you give yourself a lot more time to get to a hospital. Now, like I said, it's pressure immobilization. So if you're bitten, you, need, you use a nice stretchy bandage, go over the bite site two or three times down to the end of the limb and then all the way back up again. Then just immobilize the limb using a splint or a, a stick, whatever's available, or just sit nice and still and get to a hospital as quick as you can. Now the bite for a funnel web is said to be very painful because the venom is really acidic. They've also got really big fangs. I know I wouldn't want to be bitten by one. So you certainly know when you've been bitten. I would treat every spider bite as serious though and always seek medical advice. 
Now here in the program, like I said, um, we take all of the spiders that we get here. So even though we've got 2,000 spiders, these spiders are still babies and we need as many funnel web spiders as we can possibly get. So make sure if you find a spider in your home and you feel safe to do so, safely package that spider up, take it to a drop off point or give us a call here at the reptile park and we can give you some advice on how to get that spider to us. All of the spiders we use save lives. So somebody that uses gets the antivenom this year, that's from a spider that was milked only a year ago. And we've been lucky at the reptile park to meet some of those people uh, that have been saved by the antivenom. So we might take a few questions, Caitlin, and I think you've got a few. Yeah, we do. Um, what's the life sp lifespan of a funnel web spider? So the female funnel webs can live to up to 20 years. So they've got a really long lifespan. Like I said, they don't tend to go too far from their burrows and they wait for things to come to them. Generally, female funnel webs are only disturbed when people are out in their gardens um, and moving things around in their backyard. So if they're there, um, they're there for a long time, they set up home um, and you can usually see their webs quite commonly in your backyard. How many spiders do you need to milk for one vial of antivenom? Uh, that's a hard question. So each spider is um, quite individual in the amount of venom that they give you. So they could give you um, none at all, right up to a few big drops. So even though it's a small amount of venom, it's really, really toxic. To give you an amount, it could range between um, you know, 50 to 150 spiders that um, are needed to produce one vial of antivenom. So we need to milk an awful lot of spiders each year to produce enough venom. How much venom can you extract from one funnel web? Uh, like I said, each spider's individual. So um, we actually mark with each spider how much venom they're giving us each week. Some spiders hardly ever give us anything and sometimes you'll only see a slight shine on their fangs just to show that there's some moisture there and you don't even notice the venom droplets. Others will develop big droplets of venom on their fangs and you'll get several drops out of the one spider and they'll keep producing. So it's really individual and it does change over time. So some spiders, when they come in, they might not give us a lot and that could be um, related to their health or um, how much food they've had. Um, and then it can change over time. So being in captivity, they might get more food and feel a little bit better and then they can produce a little bit more. So it does change depending on the individual spider. Are funnel webs dangerous to cats or dogs? Funnel web venom is really interesting actually because it's only fatal to people and primates and insects. So for us, they're really dangerous and potentially fatal. But for a cat or a dog, they're actually not that bad. Most cats or dogs can neutralise the venom and feel a lot better after as little as half an hour. Are they dangerous when they're newly hatched? Newly hatched spiders, well, all spiders have venom and certainly funnel web spiders as a newly hatched spider do have venom. However, that singular ingredient that make the male funnel webs really dangerous only comes in near maturity. So they only get that one ingredient later in life. Additionally, those little babies, their fangs are so small, they probably find it hard to pierce our skin. So they're likely not as dangerous as an adult spider, certainly, but still have that venom in their system. Okay, one last question. What should you do if you find a funnel web in your home or backyard? Well, you know, we would encourage people if they find a funnel web in your home and backyard to package them up like I showed you today and send them to the reptile park for inclusion into the program. Now, it's only if you feel safe enough to do so and always keep your hands away from the spider. You can also check out the Reptile Park website for a video to show you how to catch them and safely send them to us. Now for those people who really don't feel up to catching a funnel web spider, that's okay. You can do certain things to keep them out of your home. Definitely keep mindful of getting shoes and washing and things like that off the ground and avoid having things that spiders might find attractive to hide in. If you've got them in your backyard, usually that's a sign that you've got a lovely environment in your backyard, but you can get some chickens or uh, even lizards that live in your back backyard love to eat funnel web spiders as well. So the addition of some chickens might remove those spiders. They love to eat them up for breakfast. All right, guys, I think that's all for today. Uh, please tune in tomorrow at 2pm. I think they're feeding the big guy Elvis at 2 with Jake. I'm sure it'll